I am to worship. How what a beautiful prelude to start this morning with. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome all of you here today to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining us on Facebook and we welcome all our guests. We are here to prepare our hearts to worship the one who changes everything in the world. I have several announcements this morning. This Thursday, I invite you and definitely all the council and committee people to come and have a conversation of our vision of putting all of those healthy congregation um, sessions into action. And so please come with ideas. Uh, I promise it won't be more than an hour and a half at the most, unless we just can't leave. Uh, but uh, that starts at seven o'clock and uh, come prepared and with pencil and paper. We have uh, a chance to uh, redo the movie night because the night we had scheduled for the Shine Park, it, we got rained out. So July 29th, we are back at the park. We'd love to have you there. It starts at dark. Uh, so movie night, thank you to our outreach for scheduling and doing all of those things for it. Uh, we are very happy today to have with us uh, Caitlin Askew. She is a student at Capital University. Uh, she has some very strong ties to my family, and you will hear about that in the children's sermon. Uh, and uh, we are just so very happy that you are here today. We also are celebrating a birthday for Jan Heckenauer, and so we are all going to sing happy birthday. Make sure you tell us. We don't know until, and obviously, Jan, people are here to celebrate with you today, and they told me about it. So always tell us if you have a birthday, because we love to sing. 
we have a very special uh, time coming up for all ages, Vacation Bible School, and we have a temple talk by our parish ed leader, uh, Maggie Everett. Good morning. This morning in your um, bulletins, you have a VBS sign-up sheet, and on the back it has um, a registration form. If you'll fill that out for us um, and turn it in if you're able to attend. But I want to tell you that next Sunday begins our VBS, our Vacation Bible School, and um, this year we've chosen an emoji theme and we're very excited about it. It's for the youth. Pastor Tansy is having a VBS for the adults, which I'm excited about for everyone that's able to attend. Um, but with the youth, we're gonna use emojis, and you may have seen in our, in our auditorium this morning a little bit of our, of our decoration going on already. It'll be a lot of yellow come next week when we start. Um, we're carrying on the emoji theme into our food for the youth. And we're excited about that because there's many pizzas that are around, there's waffles that are around. We're gonna be decorating them up with little faces. And I know the youth are really gonna love that. I love it, but I guess I'm a kid at heart. Um, the adults, though, will be having real food and um, it's going to be grown-up food. I, I can't tell you what it is. Our birthday girl, um, Jan, is heading that up, and so if she asks you to, for some help, if you're able to help for the days that we have VBS in the kitchen, that would be wonderful. Um, the RSVP says that it should have been turned in by last Friday. However, I always forget to turn mine in, and so I hope that there's at least one other person that forgets. You can turn those in Monday to Carol, or you can call her. Actually, you could turn it in today to the office, just leave it on Carol's desk. But if you forget that, call her tomorrow and tell her that you want to go to VBS. I'm going to go buy the food, and I won't do that until probably Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so there's, there's time still, even though it says Friday, we want you there, and we want the children there, and we want the adults there, so it's a truly intergenerational theme. There's a number of people that are already signed up, both a lot of youth and a lot of adults. Uh, VBS will be held on Sunday and Monday evenings this, again this year for three weeks, beginning next week, next Sunday, July 31st and August 1st, and then continue on August 7th and 8th and August 14th and 15th. And through our Living Waters grant, that stewardship, applied for and, and received. They've um, allowed us to use some of the money and we've reserved a Miller Park pool for August 7th. And we'll be out there at the pool. We have a couple of shelters rented and we'll be grilling hot dogs. So bring your family, bring your friends. Even if they don't go here, it's okay. I plan on asking people that are at the park when we were there on August 7th to join us if they'd like and have a hot dog with us. We're going to be spreading God's word as we're told to do by our Savior. And we all know that Jesus will be right there on the water with us. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship with a moment of silence for prayer for peace in this world. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. 
Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We sing, come into his presence. the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 18, verses 20 to 32. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin! 
I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, um, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again he spoke to him, mm, suppose 40 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Psalm 138. This psalm will be read responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from Colossians 2, verses 6 through 19. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with the growth that is from God. Word of God, word of life. Amen. 
I invite the children up for a children's sermon. Jasmine is getting a lot of love today. Lots of things going in that blue pig. She will certainly appreciate all the gifts from all of you. I have, um, I'll let you keep putting in your coins there. It makes a lot of noise. You can jiggle it down there so we can all hear how it's filling up. You want to jiggle it for me? Can you make some noise? Ah, listen to that. That's a good sound, isn't it? <laughs> it's giving gifts to God and knowing that that love is being spread. You guys look at me a little bit this way. It's easier. Um, today, we talk about uh, the disciples asking Jesus to teach them to pray. And I had said I was going to talk to you about Caitlin, the girl who is going to be singing young woman, I should say, sorry. Uh, but I uh, knew her as a very young girl. Uh, her mom, her grandmother and I used to teach music together at school. And so she comes from a family of teachers. And then I got to teach her mom. And then my daughter got to teach Caitlin. And so it's like that interweaving of teaching. And that is kind of what God is telling us to do. Does this look like it's interweaved? It looks like a lot of different colors going together. And then you have these green dots. Yellow and blue make what? Yes. Green. Yep. Good answer. Um, I wouldn't have known that until I took art. And uh, that helps a lot. But when we have conversation with God, let's say God is the blue and we are the yellow, we have a dialogue. That's what we do when we come to church. We talk to God. That's what the worship is all about, is coming to church and talking to God. That's who calls us together, and that's why we are all <laughs> gathered here. And a lot of people forget why we come to church. Sometimes we think we come to church for us to feel better, but actually what we come to church for is to tell God, thank you for everything that you have given us, God speaks to us, we pray to God, we sing to God, and then we listen to his word. And then we have this wonderful opportunity, just like you did with that blue pig, where we understand that God gives us gifts, and then we give them back. It's the most personal part of the whole service, is that offering to know that we've made that connection. And when we keep making those connections, look at what happens to our world. It keeps getting bigger, and the outreach goes bigger and look at how that just makes our hearts bigger. It all happens in prayer and praise and singing and by teaching each other how important it is. All of these people always are reminding me of teaching because they come to here and then they share it. Because at the very end, we say we go out into the world, right? And who do we take with us? Yes, we take Jesus with us. And he goes, I'm going to go with you. Let me go all the places you go. And when we keep praying, we always know we can ask God for anything. And he hears us. Now, he doesn't always give us everything we ask for. That doesn't mean he's not listening. But it means, hey, I'm your friend. I'm always going to listen to you. I'm always going to hear what you are asking for. And I will help you understand the world better and live it great. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to pray. And may we do it often. Amen. Grab a tambourine and you can help us sing the gospel acclamation. Please stand.
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. And for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to get good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Christ. You may be seated for our special music.
Thank you, Caitlin, and how perfect. It always amazes me how our special music has always fed right into the gospel. I hope you're seeing that connection about you say, Lord, and we are listening, and then you get to talk right back to God, and he always answers. He's always there at his timing. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I have this habit. When I come into Bucyrus, I always check out McDonald's, obviously, for coffee, and then uh, my eyes are wide opened as I turn on to Poplar Street. And I have fallen in love with this one corner garden of flowers as I drive into the church. I, it caught my attention. And then I started to admire how beautiful every, every plant is placed among that little corner spot. And then I go a little bit slower, and uh, thankfully there's a stop sign there, and I can study it a little bit more of exactly how is it done, because I want to know. And I don't know if that person that lives in that house knows that they are teaching me something great by just what they put out there in their yard. But you know, teaching other people is what our call is all the time. And when we see something that we can connect in, we learn it because we want to know. My professor in the seminary, you know, as we went into some difficult things, he goes, if you want to know it, you will learn it. Anything you want to know, you will learn. And so I thought that was like excellent in how we get into hearing how Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. It is beautiful. So many times we take for granted people know how to pray. You know, we go to church, of course you know how to pray, but you know, here is that reassurance that the disciples were hanging out with Jesus and they weren't sure how to pray. And so they said, teach us. And it's because they trusted their teacher. They trusted, they admired him, they studied what he was doing, and they wanted to be more like him all the time. And so as we go into this Lord's Prayer, it's the best, best prayer we can ever pray because Jesus taught us how to do this. It's in two places in the Bible. This is the Luke version. The other version is in Matthew. But it is time to really focus on prayer. He has led. Remember, we're on the way to Jerusalem. This past couple of Sundays, we've been talking about Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, and he is headed to the resurrection. None of the disciples know this is happening yet. We get to see all of this from our view and our perspective. But this is all new to them. 
And there's something great about it when it's new. You know, the first time you experience a new kind of product, a new food, how excited you are to tell somebody else about it. We've kind of gotten into that habit where, yes, we say the Lord's Prayer, of course, we say the Lord's Prayer. We all know the Lord's Prayer. We learn it. But it's time to restore, refresh. When we say it, knowing that we are speaking Jesus' words, this is what he told us to pray. And Jesus is the genius in how our faith develops. We can't take it for granted. We can't just say, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. It's, this is the prayer our Lord taught us. And it's amazing, and it's exciting. And so, as I am getting ready to prepare for Bi Bible school, you know, I like to go back to how I experienced Bible school when I was a kid because you know how exciting it was. There was going to be something new there. There was going to be those little crackers that my mom would never buy that had that filling in, and I could go and eat that food, and I thought that was like the best thing ever. And then I got to be with new friends, and then I got to hear in a very fun way how much Jesus loves us. Every time we read the Bible, that's how we should come, with our eyes wide open, our hearts ready to learn something new, excited. This is where you find the good stuff in life. It's right in front of you. Many of us, when we are called to pray in front of people, and I am right there included with you, I used to be in my class of confirmation of 60 students, and I would always sit in the very back row, and I would pray very hard through that confirmation class, please don't call on me to pray out loud, because everyone's going to hear it, and you fear. Well, here is that example that you can always pray, and it's perfect. Anything you say to God is always perfect. You don't have to worry. He's listening to you. He knows your heart already. He gave us this structure so that we could understand who God is. That's why Jesus came to us. He came to bring heaven on earth. And this is the place where heaven overlaps earth. And it's where we get to experience heaven today. Our salvation today, the joy of living in Christ is today. And when we pray, we understand God even more. That's why he's saying, ask, seek, knock. Those are intentional. And it, we could go on and on for sermons forever about the asking and the seeking and knocking. But you know what it's like when your child or a, a, anyone comes up to you and says, could I spend some time with you? I mean, it just warms your heart. That's what God wants to hear from us. Could I spend some time with you, Lord? because I just want to be in your presence. I just want to have one conversation. And you don't have to worry about what you're asking, because God does know your heart. But when you do ask, you understand it a little bit better what you're asking for. Now, there's a lot of people that think, well, if you ask and God just gives it to you, that's the blessings. But there have been a lot of times in my life where I've asked for things. And my answer wasn't what I wanted it to be. But that's when you trust your Father to give you everything good. You don't know what it is. It might be more time, more patience. And I don't think it's wrong to say I am making a list that when I see Jesus face to face, I have a lot of questions. I want to know why did this happen the way it did, and I know that God will always have the answer. Because I trust our Father. And so the very first thing he tells his disciples is this. When you pray, pray this way, our Father. The two most important words in the prayer, because that tells you that God wants to have this relationship with you. Our Father, Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. And that is the whole idea of always putting God first, and we are his children. And when you know you're praying to someone who loves you, 
and is committed to you, the promises are unchanging and they are true, then you know everything that comes after that is in a trusting relationship, a trusting poem that God gives us to pray. We say, our Father who art in heaven, and wherever heaven is, that's where God is. Heaven on earth, heaven in our hearts. Hallowed be thy name. And for so many people, they don't understand what that means. Hallowed means holy, and God is holy. It's us that need to remember that. And so he says, hallowed be thy name. You know, we always say Halloween, right? Well, Hallow's Eve is the Holy Eve before the Reformation. That's how it got its name. All Hallow's Eve, the Holy Eve before we experience God. And so when we hold God holy, that means above all things, not in the midst of everything. We have church here, we have work, we have everything. That's not how it's supposed to work. God's here, just like we said last week with Mary and Martha, that God is up here. He is number one. And when God is number one, everything falls into place. Because it keeps our focus where it needs to be. And we pray for the kingdom to come. And you know, Jesus has come. The kingdom is here among us. And living in kingdom culture is what we are called to do. Knowing that this is the place where all love, all forgiveness, all grace and mercy is here. It's the kingdom. And we are all sitting in the presence of the kingdom today. That's why we come to worship when we're having this dialogue with our Father because we know this is where we learn. This is where we get bonded together to help each other. And we pray for God's will to be done because we know that God's vision is so much bigger. So those first three parts of that prayer is all about our soul. And then it moves on. The daily bread, give us this day our daily bread. We only pray one day at a time because God knows that's all we can handle. We always have to go back and start over every single day to remember who we belong to and who God is because the world likes to pull us away. And when we pray for our daily bread, we're praying for everything. We're praying for our food, for our house, for our neighbor, for anything that we do in this life. Martin Luther in Catechism explains that well. And we will be going over that in Bible school, so I hope you're coming. Just another plug there. And then it gets to the hard part. Forgive us this day. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. If it wasn't for that last part, wouldn't it be easy? That's the hard part. We have to forgive everybody else the way God forgives us. Oh, and we could spend time and time again on how that works. But the most important thing is that you have the willing heart to forgive, that you're not saying, I refuse to give, to forgive. Sometimes you have to struggle hard and there are things that are difficult to forgive. But God just wants you to have that heart that you don't want to wish bad for anybody that you want them all to know God, to come to God and love God the way God forgives us and we know God. It's a lifetime work of forgiveness over and over. So when we pray that today, keep in your mind and your hearts who you have to keep thinking of forgiving. Keep that heart growing and expanding and get rid of all that hate. And I've told you this before, it's my favorite line of my mentor. You know, to have more heaven on earth, it means you got to love the hell out of it. And it really is true. You have to get rid of the hate and just surround it with love. And then God's real. He says, temptations, they're going to happen. Jesus is our model. He was tempted in the desert by the devil 
And through that temptation, he shows the world that he is the divine and human son of the Father, always obedient and all the way to the cross, all the way to the resurrection, all the way to us. Deliver us from evil, Lord. We're praying for our salvation. Let us be with you forever. And then we add the doxology on the end. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And I love that part. And I think our church should just ring with sound when we say that. That's a glorious thing to say. Forever and ever. We know this is where our faith is. So as we go through our prayers, we should pray it at least three times a day. Pray before your meals. You're connecting with everything when you pray that we thank you, Lord, for the food that all of these people did to bring it to my table. You've already connected to half the world. You get it so prayer is ingrained and it is part of you. The good habits, the showing up for worship and remembering who we come to worship. And if it's not exactly what we always want it to be, we know that God is looking at us. And do you think we're always what he wants us to be? He's always saying, I'm here. I forgive your sins. Go back out and try it again. I'm going with you. Come back on Sunday. Tell me all about it. And it's just one of those spinning crosses that just keeps your lives moving and in joy, even amongst all the pain. To learn, to ask, to seek, and to knock. Oh, is there any better way to spend your life? To love like Jesus, to bring more heaven on earth. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, emboldened church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. Interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislators and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer, especially Sean McDivitt, Keith Young, Jess, Anita Spiegel, Marilyn Gebhardt, Mike Schiffer, Chuck Wireman, Tammy Corwin, Kay Pfeiffer, Chuck Scott, Connie Smith, Marge Bodenot, Mike Culley, Miriam Everett, Ruth Lady Pollock, Carol May, Bob Norris, Christina Oakes, Riley, Heidi Walton, Marion Smith, Lori Beers, and all who we name in our hearts today. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation, bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, trouble and sorrow in your holy name. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Share the peace of the Lord. Jesus. 
suffering and all the while you hear each spoken need yet love is way too much to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights wisdom your voice to hear and we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near we doubt your goodness we doubt your love as if every promise from your word is not enough and oh Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion, we will come forward in two lines down the center aisle and take communion there. All baptized believers are welcome at our table. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin in the world. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
Please stand. And where you feel comfortable holding the person's hand next to you, please do. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus' grace. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And hear the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded, grounded in, in faith, faith gathered, gathered in love, in love and sent with a purpose, purpose so, so that, that others, others may gain, gain the, the kingdom. kingdom. We sing this beautiful song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Go in peace, love your neighbor. And speak to God.